I've never much liked compulsory superannuation. I'd much rather be in charge of my own money. Sure, I'm happy if super exists, but let's make it voluntary. A recent report from the Center for Independent Studies CIS, agrees. The report titled Millennials and Super – The Case for Voluntary Superannuation suggests that the money that young people are forced to save for their retirement through compulsory superannuation would be better off being spent to save up for a house in the present. Owning a house early on in life is a better option than not owning a house in retirement, but having a super balance instead. CIS Research Director Simon Cohen suggests that the massive increase in house prices, especially in places like Sydney and Melbourne, delays home ownership for first-home buyers. He said, Super is paid for out of the wages of workers. Diverting more of these wages to prop up future super balances will damage workers in the present. Though it is likely that home ownership is more important than accumulating superannuation, the system prioritizes superannuation above home ownership. Looking at this chart from the report, we can see that property prices have risen sharply compared to Australian income since about the early 1990s, around the same time compulsory superannuation was introduced. With the introduction of compulsory super, workers have had to spend a lot more of their take-home income to save up enough for a home deposit. Mr. Cohen has labelled compulsory super as a form of government paternalism, that is, the government think that they know what is best for us. However, in the process, they have also made it harder for young people to save up for their first home. Mr. Cohen said, The ratio of the average deposit in Sydney to average earnings increased by more than 70% between 1996 and 2015. During the same time, government increased the compulsory super contribution by about the same percentage. Not only is that bad housing policy, it's actually bad retirement policy as well. Here's a chart showing the rate of home ownership for the various age groups. As you can see, home ownership has pretty much fallen for all age categories, except perhaps for those who are 65 years or older. The largest falls have occurred in the younger age groups, 25 to 44 year olds and 35 to 44 year olds. I fall into that category and it's not looking too good for us. This ongoing trend is very worrying indeed. There was a time in the early 80s when more than 60% of young people owned their own home, but that's since fallen well below 50% in recent years. When it comes to compulsory super, employers are required to pay 9.5% of workers' salaries into the superannuation system, but that's said to be increasing to 12% by 2025. According to modelling conducted by the Grattan Institute, this increase in compulsory super will strip almost $20 billion of workers' salaries away from them every year. Home ownership rates are simply going to get worse and worse. Mr. Cohen said, You can be comfortable in retirement without a super balance, but it's far harder to do so if you don't own your own home. Making super voluntary would also fix problems with unacceptably high fees and low returns, because super funds would have to compete for your dollars. So there we go. Compulsory superannuation hurts first home buyers. As Simon Cohen said, superannuation is government paternalism at its best. The government seem to think that they know what is good for us, so they force us to pay a percentage of our hard-earned cash into a system which is known for unfair fees and poor returns. Super doesn't help individuals. Super helps the super funds. I'm not saying to get rid of it, but at the very least, let's make it voluntary just like it should be in a free and democratic society.